Good morning, friends. Good morning. We are Don and Janie Seltzer, and we are broadcasting live here at Hidden Life Ministries. August the 23rd, Don, 2020. Don likes to keep us on the day, and today, this is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it, friends, no matter what is going on around the world. Hello, Sister Debbie. Good to see you. And everyone, let us know who you are and where you are. Um, we are so humbled and grateful and thankful. I guess I just couldn't have any more um, expletives to explain how grateful we are to the zig or descriptions rather. That's a better word, not the expletives, right? Yeah. Wrong word. Um, we're grateful to the Zig Ziglar family for um, giving us an opportunity on their Facebook page. Um, I'm part of the Zig Ziglar family. I'm a Zig Ziglar trainer, trainer, but I'm the spiritual director. Mr. Ziglar was a strong Christ follower, and that's why we are privileged to be in this space for people around the world who need to have hope and encouragement and strength for their souls. I think now more than, well, uh, it's nice. such an important time for all of us to, to receive the strength that it can only come from God. There's so much going on around the world. There is, there is trouble and distress, including right here in, in California. Many of you know around the world that there are terrible fires raging in Northern California. Um, if you're wondering, that's far away from us, but we feel it, as do all of you. Um, it's just another example of how much we all need to find our security in Christ and in Christ alone. And that's what Pastor Don uh, and I do um, on a daily basis. We anchor our souls in the love of God, and we want to encourage you to do that too. Yeah. We don't walk by sight, we walk by faith. Exactly, we don't walk by sight. And so now with that- and By God's grace, we rise above it. Yes, yes. We have to keep our eyes on the bigger picture, on the sun, even the son of God. So with that, let us gather together around the fire of the love of God. And let's, it's interesting, right? Fire of the love of God. And let's ask him to come and to comfort, comfort his people and to comfort our own souls with his love. Holy Father, we lift our palms to you, recognizing that without you, there is no hope. Without you, there's no security. Without you, there is no strength for our souls. And so we call upon your holy name, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God almighty heaven and earth are full of his glory glory be to you O lord most high father we come to you humbly like children who who need to run to safety you have said to us unless we turn and become like little children we will never enter the kingdom of god and so we 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 shed our pride our need to appear big and, and in control, our need to, to look to the world for strength and security. We shed all of that. We shed our money, we shared our position, we shed every security, and we become like little children who need to run to Abba Daddy, hmm. who calls us by name, who knows each and every one of us, who sees us, who accepts us, who forgives us, who cherishes us. By the blood of Jesus, the only begotten, beloved Son of God, who gave his life so that we might run to Abba Daddy even now by the power of the Holy Spirit. And so we run to you, Father. Hmm. We run to you knowing that your arms are open wide to receive us, to love us, to lay your hand of blessing upon us. So bless your people, Lord. Bless all the children who run to you. May they find, as we find, 
acceptance, forgiveness, and peace. May your life be our peace and our rest. Rest us in your presence, Father. I pray for each person around the world who needs your healing touch. Would you lay your hand of healing upon them? And would your power flow through them? Would you flow healing and rest so that their body might rise up in healing in the light and love of your presence? We pray for those who mourn, who have lost their homes, who have lost children. We pray for all those who need your comfort. Thank you, Father. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. So come, Lord Jesus, in the power of your kingdom, in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, I pray. Amen. Amen. Nine years ago, I was able to go to a conference at the... Uh, Civic Center down in San Diego. Mm -hmm. The speaker, uh, Patrick Carnes, uh, he's uh, probably the top uh, expert on addiction issues. Mm -hmm. And myself being trained as an interventionist and a recovery coach, I wanted to go there. Mm -hmm. And also a pastor. Yes, yeah, a pastor. But, but Patrick Carnes, a clinical psychologist, is far more than addiction issues, mm -hmm. whether it be food addiction, sex addiction, alcohol addiction, drug addiction, uh, it can be uh, addiction to the internet. I mean, you, you name it where it's obsessive and it's out of control and it's unmanageable. Mm. He talked about this, the, in, in particular aspect of one of his talks was the incredible culture that we're in mm. and how it is, as he says, quote, our society produces addicts more than any other in history. Mm. The culture of America produces more addicts than any other in history. Hmm. And he listed nine reasons. And I'd like to give you these nine so that you can uh, reflect on them. But I find that we're in the midst of this. Uh, we're looking, going to be looking at Luke chapter 14, hmm. 25 through 33. Hmm. You might turn to your Bibles yeah. right now. Luke 14, 25 through 33. And this applies not just for America, but for the whole world, correct? Right, yeah. It's, it's, it's relevant for all of us because it's dealing with the S-I-N. Good. Shallow, impulsive, and narcissistic. Mm -hmm. Remember that. Shallow, impulsive, and narcissistic. Mm -hmm. S-I-N. Well, in this talk of his, it really provided a, a backdrop to me of what we're going to be talking about in Luke 14, 25 through 33. Because we're in a world, we're in a culture, we're in a cesspool that has nine, he believes, nine uh, components. One, our culture has a quick fix, convenience-oriented mentality. Mm. Okay? Mm -hmm. Impulsivity. As mm -hmm. I said, shallow, impulsive, narcissistic. Mm -hmm. Our society stresses easy solutions. Mm. Three, our era suffers from values confusion, mm. confused morals. This is the first generation that hasn't passed its values onto its young. People don't have that kind of anchors that they used to. Very clear. So true. Four, our culture is heavily oriented toward entertainment. It, 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 it's, again, it's pleasure. It's, all, it's shallow. Mm -hmm. uh, five, our culture suffers from disrupted family life. Children grow up in fragmented homes and experience internal abandonment. Mm. Uh, it, it's, it's, it's epidemic. We mm -hmm. see it all the time. And, mm -hmm. and then the next generation takes this shattered, fragmented world, and they're just trying to do whatever they can to cope mm -hmm. and, and numb the pain mm -hmm. of, of the loss mm -hmm. and the feelings of internal abandonment. Six, there's an enormous loss of community. The average person moves about every three years. Mm. The sustained support of extended family members or ongoing close friendships is missing. Mm. And I believe that, that there's truth to that. You can mm. see the mobility of our culture of people here, there, and everywhere. Mm -hmm. and, and what happens is that there's no true ties. There's no true safety net. You're like walking the tightrope without a safety net. Seven, our ours is a high-stress culture, high anxiety. Eight, 
Ours is a very abusive society. In other words, bullying, meanness. Mm -hmm. There's a darkness to it. Mm -hmm. And then nine, there is a denial of limitations today. We don't deal with death very well. Mm -hmm. When King Charlemagne of France, uh, he prepared his burial and he wanted to make sure that he was going to have a proper and he felt kingly um, statement. And so what he gave instructions, very specific, to be buried in the royal posture of a king upon his throne. Hmm. Even with his cadaver, he wanted stones behind his back, erected, so he could be in this royal posture. He wanted the Gospels opened on his knees, hmm. right? His sword beside him on his left side. And he wanted his crown upon his head. Wow. Upon, uh, his, when his tomb was later uncovered, there was King Charlemagne. The crown was still perched on his skull, mm. and the sword was still there on his left, and a bony finger rested on these words well, of the Gospels. Okay. Quote, yeah. What will it profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses his own soul? That is remarkable. <laughs> wow. And I believe wow. that we can have the crown in place, can have the sword in place, have this kingly posture, and get ourselves ready for the burial, and then the open gospels, what will it profit a man or woman if they gain the whole world but lose their soul? You know, that's my life verse right there. Mm. Uh, I, um, I, I think that the main question of life is, is it well with your soul? Mm -hmm. And... Uh, so, wow, what a story. Thanks for that, Don. That was amazing. Luke 14. Yeah, so we're, um, it ties in perfectly with our question for today that this is raised by Jesus. Um, we're going through the parables, and the parables are very, very uh, pointed. <laughs> That's interesting, that word, the bony finger point. They're very pointed. They're very, uh, Jesus doesn't mince any words. He's, he, he wants us to think about how to finish, in this particular parable, how to finish what we start. You know, a lot of people are good starters, but they don't know how to finish. And that applies both in their business life, in their personal life, in their marriages, and in their spiritual life. And of course, of all of the things I mentioned, the most important is our spiritual life. And Jesus really brings this question to the forefront um, in Luke chapter 14. And we hope you'll read the whole chapter and get the context. But Verse, Verses 25 through 33. We'll begin with just the parable itself. And here it goes. Suppose one of you wants to build a tower. Will he not first sit down and estimate the cost to see if he has enough money to complete it? For if he lays the foundation and is not able to finish it, everyone who sees it will ridicule him, saying, This fellow began to build and was not able to finish. Or suppose a king is about to go to war against another king. Will he not first sit down and consider whether he is able with 10,000 men to oppose the one coming against him with 20,000? If he is not able, he will send a delegation on while, while the other is still a long way off and will ask for terms of peace. In the same way, in the same way, any of you who does not give up everything he has cannot be my disciple. Hmm. Beautiful. Well, Jesus um, is challenging us with some very strong words. And these words are um, a wake-up call. Um, we see plagues. We see fires, we see tornadoes and hurricanes, and we hear Jesus. And he says to us mortals, 
um, I recently discovered that often the word that we translate human is really mortals. And I like that better. Um, he says to us mortals, <laughs> if you are not willing to give up everything you have, you cannot be my disciple. Now, we're going to delve into this parable and we're going to ask you questions and we're going to all ask ourselves, are we willing spiritually to finish what we start? How do we do that? Mm -hmm. Well, when I look at this passage, uh, I, I see uh, two components mm. and they, they're two bullet points for you mm -hmm. and they each have four words. Mm -hmm. Because, see, to be a disciple has to, one, discern to plan ahead, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. You've got to discern to plan ahead. Mm -hmm. If you're going to be a disciple, you cannot just simply sit by the sidelines and react. You've got to plan ahead. Mm -hmm. It requires discernment. The second four words mm -hmm. is determine. Mm -hmm. Determine to follow through. Yeah. If you're unwilling to, if you do the discernment, but you don't follow through, it's meaningless. If you have the best words and have best scripture quotes, and you have the best of intentions, and you have the best prayer groups, but you don't follow through, it's useless. Because until you get to that point of discerning to plan ahead, it takes time alone with you and Jesus. Yes. You're sitting down with Jesus and saying, I want to make it for the end. But to do that, I need you beside me every step of the way. Help me, guide me, direct me. How, what do I mean by that? Okay, let's just take a, a hot potato. I've had this conversation countless times with people. Follow, uh, love your enemy. Jesus loved his enemies. There on the cross, he loved his enemies, the Pharisees and Sadducees. He loved his enemies over and over again. Judas Iscariot who betrayed him. He loved them with a godly love, with a supernatural a love. A holy love. A holy love. Mm -hmm. He says, if you want to be my disciple, you've got to love your enemies. Mm -hmm. Your question was sitting down with Jesus, how do I do that? Mm -hmm. Help me. I want to learn. I want to be willing. I want to be teachable. But you see, if you don't discern to plan ahead, and you don't determine to follow through, you will not be his disciple. Mm -hmm. You will not be able to finish the tower and on that tower, it was agricultural. Mm -hmm. It was there in the vineyard, and it was supposed to be higher than, it was really a prestige item because it was, not every vineyard had that. But the man uh, who had enough money, he could scout about and see what was going on with his vineyard, with the acres and acres land. Also, it could be stored for his tools, for uh, other implements. Mm -hmm. it, it, was, it was versatile. Mm -hmm. So if the person had only the foundation, didn't have enough money, uh, as the message says, they poke fun at him. Mm -hmm. Because why? He couldn't finish what he started. Mm -hmm. He couldn't do the agricultural tower. I, I like what uh, uh, it says here in the, in the message. Uh, this is earlier. Um, he says here, concerning this, this tower, anyone who comes to me but refuses, this is the previous verse, to let go of father, mother, spouse, children, brothers, sisters, yes, even one's own self, can't be my disciples. That's a phrase that Eugene Peterson uses. Can't be my disciple. Okay? Anyone who won't shoulder his or her own cross and follow behind me can't be my disciple. Uh, you've got a first, verse 28, first set down and figure the cost so you will know if you can complete it. Verse 30, everyone passing by will poke fun at you. He or she started something he couldn't finish. Verse 33, simply put, if you're not willing to take what is, what is dearest to you, whether plans or people, kiss it goodbye, you can't be my disciple. And so the costs that are involved, a disciple is one who thinks ahead. <laughs> he discerns, he determines, he thinks ahead. You know, Don, the first thing that comes to my mind that uh, need to be at, needs to be asked, you think we talk about tower, Jesus talked about a tower, and I immediately think of the, uh, of the other tower, the Tower of Babel. And maybe the first question is, what do you want to build with your life? Do you want to build, uh, you know, something that is for the kingdom of God? 
Or are you building a monument to yourself and to your own pride? That's, that's, you, do you want to follow Christ and, and be his disciple? That's, Jesus is talking about the cost of discipleship. Luke 14 is one of the most challenging <laughs> chapters on the cost of discipleship. And, and, you know, you say, well, that's, that requirement is way too hard. I don't, I'm not, I don't want to follow Christ uh, if that's what it's going to cost. Well, you know what? That's your decision. I, I have or to you can invite Jesus to sit down with you. Yes. And the, the, it's interesting to me that you and I both, and many of you listening, um, found this, that the Lord God uh, captured us captured our heart with his love and when you are captured with the love of christ you don't say uh i don't like this requirement you actually say tell me more you really do you say no one has loved me like you have loved me lord i don't i there is nothing on this earth that compares why would I go anyplace else? Tell me what it takes to follow you to the end. And that's really where we begin. It really begins with, do you want your heart captured with a quality of love that you cannot possibly imagine? If you do, then invite Jesus to love you. And maybe, so, so these words that we're talking about right now of, of leaving everything, denying everything, it makes no sense if you haven't been captured. Mm -hmm. But if you have felt and experienced the love of Christ, you say, Lord God, where else will I go? For you speak words of eternal life. And that's really the bottom line here. If you want to follow me, it requires that our love and loyalty for him is above all others. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's right. It's it easy to say it. no when there's a deeper yes burning Absolutely inside. Absolutely requires If that. you don't have the deeper yes burning inside, you're not going to be able uh, to uh, follow Christ wholeheartedly and, and with, a, uh, with a, uh, energy and zeal and passion. Mm -hmm. But if you have that deeper yes mm -hmm. burning inside, in other words, that love, that, love. that heart, that yes. affection, that relationship of intimacy, then you can say yes to him no matter what. John Eldridge, who's written many a book, Wild at Heart and, and countless others that have been appealing to uh, really Christians throughout the world, he wrote this, when you decide to step out and follow Jesus, okay, when you decide to step out and follow Jesus, a flame of passion grows in your heart. Mm. Your love for him is demonstrated in the radical way you live your life. Mm. In following Jesus, you see redemptive transformation in all your relationships, your plans, your job, your finances. Today, you pray not have, um, you, you may rather, today you may, have, may not have Jesus as a person to follow around, but you have his truth and his ways and his spirit mm. to devote your life to. Mm. Your decisive response to Jesus, your heartfelt choice to live a life of obedience, Friend, you will never be the same. May your life be a daily demonstration of your passionate devotion to Jesus. That's it. Passionate devotion. Okay. And that passion, de passionate devotion is what, uh, is what keeps us going, is what gives us um, strength. Um, to follow me, Jesus said, requires that we give up all expectations for our life. You know, it, letting go of expectations uh, is, is so important to happiness. If you're holding on to something that you think you must have in order to be happy, um, you are not ever going to find what you're looking for because we have to let go of our expectations and, and sacrifice them at the foot of the cross. Not my will, Lord, but yours be done. That's the way mm -hmm. we live with passionate devotion. You it's, know, it, it's the surrender prayer. It's the surrender prayer. You know, it's interesting to me that, um, G, that the disciples at one point said, but Lord, we have left all to follow you. 
And Jesus responded. This is in Matthew 19. Uh, you might want to look it up, mark it in your Bibles, because it's really interesting. Uh, Matthew 19, 29, where Peter says, Lord, we've left everything to follow you. And Jesus replied with these words. Hmm. Truly, I tell you, Jesus said to them, no one who has left home or wife or brothers or sisters or parents or children for the sake of the kingdom of God will fail to receive many times as much, which actually means in the Greek manifold more in this age and in the age to come, eternal life. You know, the irony of the whole thing is that Jesus promised the disciples, if you're willing to leave all and follow me, to let go of your expectations, you will actually receive in this age manifold more and in the age to come, eternal life. I have lived and Don has lived long enough and followed Christ long enough to see this promise come true. And it is true for all of you. But you don't live with, oh good, I get to, I get to receive manifold more. Mm -hmm. No, you begin obedience. every day in obedience. Lord, I can't see where we're going, but I trust you. Lord, I lay my expectations at the foot of the cross. I don't know what tomorrow will bring, but I follow you. I, I think that with all that's raging around the world, that if we can get to the place in our souls where we can proclaim like Job finally did, the Lord gives and the Lord takes away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. May I say that again? The Lord gives and the Lord takes away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. That is the place of complete rest. If you are in unrest and anxiety, Don talked about how this culture that we're living in that is so shallow, that is so full of anxiety, impulsive. so impulsive. You know what, friends? If you want to leave that culture and live in the kingdom of God, then I encourage you to say these words, the Lord gives and the Lord takes away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Give up what it is you're holding on to. I was having dinner with a friend the other night, a few nights ago, and we were discussing these fires raging in Northern California, which raged, by the way, two years ago. And she told me that she had personal friends in Northern California who had just completed their $2.1 million home in Northern California, right in the middle of Napa Valley. As you know, it's the wine country. They had brought in antiques from all over the world, beautiful Italian antiques. She went up to help them finish their, the placement of all of their treasures in their beautiful home. And their home, was destroyed. Every single piece of it was destroyed to ashes in the fire two years ago. They had to flee for their lives. Next door, there was an elderly couple that were asleep in their magnificent home who were burned to death. They escaped with the robes on their back. And who, I, who, the elderly couple? No, they died. the friend, the elderly couple okay. died, right. but her friends died, uh, escaped with, with literally their bedclothes on. They woke up and smelled smoke and raced for their car, didn't have time to warn anyone else. And I looked at my friend and I said, has it changed their lives? How has their life been different? Because everything was taken away. And she looked at me, and she didn't have an answer for me. And she said, well, I can tell you that they now live in Florida. And I said, well, okay, I live like, That's in the solution. <laughs> in AA, they call it geographics. Yes. Change your location, Change and your you leave location. your problems behind. That's right. And she really didn't know how it changed her life. But as I, as I looked at her and waited 
for an answer, hoping that she would say to me, Janie, they fell at the feet of God and said, the Lord gives and the Lord takes away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. You know what? I don't know that their, their story in, answered that, um, resulted in that, but I know of another family and they perhaps are listening right now and their home was taken away and they did say to the Lord and they have lived with a lightness of being ever since. The Lord gives and the Lord takes away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And you know what? They have lived and followed Christ with such vigor that they've never been the same. So you see, we have a choice, don't mm -hmm. we? The same sun, S-U-N, either melts the wax or hardens the clay. Yes. The same sun, okay, sun. that's the adversity, the trials, the troubles, either melts the wax, softens you, or hardens the clay, makes you more embittered. You know, one of the things that, in my years of uh, seminary and also with uh, churches in Florida and now here in California, I've held to is the perseverance of the saints. Mm -hmm. And those of you who are familiar with this doctrine, it takes the scriptures and say, those who are, who are followers of Christ will persevere mm -hmm. to the end. Mm -hmm that there is such a fire in your belly, there's such a passion in your heart, there's such a determination. Remember the two phrases? I had discern to plan ahead, determine to follow through, discern to plan ahead. Perseverance of the saints, you do that. You plan ahead. Determine to follow through, perseverance of the saints, you do that because this is part of your relationship with him. All you want to do is please him and honor him. John Piper had these words to say. To gain every possession possible in this world, sort of like what you're talking about, Jane. Yes. And yet to be without Christ is to be bankrupt forever. That's good. That's very good. To gain every possession, to gain every possession possible in this world, and yet to be without Christ is to be bankrupt forever. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Well said. Well and said. then William Gurnall said in 1680, none will have such a sad parting from Christ as those who went halfway with him. Mm, say that again. None will have such a sad parting from Christ yes. as those who went halfway halfway with him. Oh, that's good. You know, I was thinking, it's funny, I'm glad you quoted that because I was thinking about our listeners today and how many of you maybe feel that you have built the wrong tower, <laughs> if you will, uh, put your energy into the wrong kingdom. And you feel like, oh my goodness, uh, if all that you're saying is true, what am I to do? And, and the answer is, start now. Mm -hmm. It's not too late to make a fresh start. We can't change the past, but we can start today to build for the kingdom of God. Mm -hmm. I, 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 the word came to me, you can practice a great reversal in your life. You can say, God, Lord God. Heavenly King, Abba Father, the Holy One of Israel, I want to start now to live my life for the kingdom of God. I don't really even know what that means, but I want to do it. I want to build my tower for you, Lord. I want my, a great re reversal to begin in my life. And some of you have gone halfway or went halfway and got enticed by the world. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I think that's one of the saddest stories that we hear are people who were beacons for Christ, who got lured by the world and, and, and they're well, also their choices too. I don't want them to be victims. Oh yes. Oh yes. Yeah, I, they have choices. Oh, absolutely. I and agree. We all have choices. I agree every day. Yeah. And the world, the flesh and the devil. That's right. Amen. The, the threefold aspect of, yes. of, of darkness. But uh, Janie, as she was speaking, I got another four words for you. Focused. Okay. Yep. Focused. Not just focused, but ED. Focused. Obedience. Starts now. Mm, that's good. All right. Focused <laughs> obedience starts now. If you've been dinking around, that's a Filipino word. If you've been one who's in taking... <laughs> wait, 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 wait. We've got Filipinos that's listening. That's fine. I, I'm a mestizo. Yeah, it's a okay. mestizo. Okay, good. But, but the point is, is that if in turn uh, that uh, you, you've been cutting corners, you're going at it half-hearted, you're not really all in, 
This is your time to take those four words and make them yours. Put them in your heart. Put them in your brain. Put them on your forehead, mm -hmm. on your, uh, what do you call these things? Palms. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and uh, put it on your gate, put it on your doorpost, Amen. you know, focused obedience starts now. Amen. Today is the day. Yeah. Today is the, the day of confusion. salvation. Let them hear those four words. Okay. Focused obedience starts now. Focused obedience starts, starts now. Now. And it's the great reversal. Yeah. I think that, that what, what has to happen, though, to finish the tower or to be wise in the, in the war for the king is that you've got to have discernment and you've got to have determination and focused obedience starts now. That's good. And that brings me to my third uh, uh, point, which was to follow me requires that we carry our own cross. You're going to find this in Luke chapter 14 and I, I it's a mysterious uh image that i have kind of mused over for years is what does it mean to carry our own cross jesus clearly carried the cross for the sins of the world in his flesh and he went all the way carrying the cross in fact he was so uh, uh, there was so much uh, placed on him that that he that he just he, he was he had been lashed his flesh was uh, it was exposed it was just beyond words gruesome and so isn't that enough Lord why would you ask us to carry our own cross and what I have come to understand through the years is that each and every one of us listen up folks each and every one of us has something that will take us to the foot of our cross. And it's a burden that we must carry, whether we like it or not. We, that's part of what Don is talking about, what we're both talking about here, is the focused obedience. Even if, it's the even if, there it comes again, it keeps coming mm -hmm. up, it's the even if. Even if one of my children does not desire to follow you, I will keep following you. And that might be your cross. Even if my husband or my wife decides that they're going to turn their back on everything they believe, I will still follow you. Even if you take my child, uh, Lord, I will follow you. Even if I lose everything, I will follow you. That is... And everybody has a cross fit for them. I've had crosses fit for me. Don has crosses, a, a, a cross fit for him. And we have to be willing. So um, I, I'm not, uh, this is not about publicity. This is just to share. In my book that was just published, in the very back of the book, actually, this is the one without the, the, the mark across it. In the very back of the book, I really hope that you will purchase it for your soul and for the soul of someone else who needs to know what it means to follow Christ. How do they get it? Uh, you can get it on Amazon, even if the transforming power of perfect love. It is, this is not about, this is about learning to grow with Christ. And the author? <laughs> I'm the author, Janie Seltzer. Uh, he's, he, he, Don wants me to remind you. Who is that woman? Um, at any rate, in the back, the last poem, it's basically a visual and poetic journey of following Christ. It is a, a love story. It's a love story of falling so in love with Jesus that everything, every cross I had to carry and every cross you have to carry will not be too hard because he will be beside you. And the last poem is called The Man with the Wounds and the Radiant Face. I'm not going to read it. It's too long to read right now, but I'm going to quote to you what I came to that ties in with this parable. And that, that is a, ver um, a quote. I'm not sure where it comes from. Um, maybe a um, good old anonymous out there somewhere said it. God gives us the cross. And the cross gives us God. Let me say that again. God gives us the cross. That's the gift. 
That's his gift. That's the cross of eternal life. That's the salvation cross. And the cross gives us God. The cross we have to carry gives us God. When I embraced my cross, I drew into the presence of God like I never thought possible. And so can you. It's painful though. It's a painful, it's painful. Right. And we, Don and I, will not tell you less than the truth. No, there's no sweetness in light. We are here to tell you the truth. It's difficult to carry your own cross. It hurts. But the Lord will sustain you. The Lord is by your side. He carried the big one. But we, friends, must carry our cross. And that's the even if of your life. I don't know what your even if is. I don't know what you're terrified of. I don't know there is something that you hold on to and no one knows but you. And if you don't carry that cross to Jesus, if you don't say, yes, Lord, I will carry my cross, I will carry my cross. If you don't do that, then you will stop following. And we want to... You will be a half-hearted believer. You'll Christian. be a half-hearted believer. And Jesus calls us to wholehearted devotion. You won't be sorry. You will be filled with a joy like the world cannot give you. You will be filled with life here in this life and for life eternal if you will carry your own cross. Mm -hmm. A person who carried his own cross uh, was Dietrich Bonhoeffer. Uh, Dietrich Bonhoeffer from Germany was uh, born in 1906. Uh, he died in 1945, April the 9th. Actually, April the 9th is signified because it's the, uh, it was the last day of World War II, mm. April the 9th. Uh, when he was in his uh, uh, brilliant man and theologian and writer, he was able to uh, finish school earlier, get his doctoral studies, University of Berlin, and then he went over to Union Theological Seminary in New York, uh, was struck by um, uh, the black uh, church by Adam Clayton Powell Sr., and it stirred him up to have more fervor. So when he came back to the States at 27, Hitler became chancellor, and, um, and the first person to speak against Hitler uh, was Dietrich Bonhoeffer. He did it on radio. His show was cut off in half, uh, cut short, and uh, his life was watched for, for the next, he died at 39 years of age for the next 12 years. But through it all, he had bravery, he had courage, he had focus. He wrote a book called The Cost of Discipleship, and I want you to to uh, understand uh, what what he was saying there. An excellent book to purchase, The Cost of, of Discipleship. Discipleship by Dietrich Bonhoeffer. But he wrote, he was in, in prison in the 40s, so for about five, six years, and he eventually died at, at the extermination camp at Flossenburg. Um, he, he, he died a humiliating death. He was uh, stripped naked uh, in that April day and then hung. And uh, he said, uh, Powerfully, he said that uh, uh, my life is, is his. And, um, yeah, let's see here. Yeah, he said my, my, my life is, my life has ended. My true life begins now. Hmm. Okay. But here's what Dietrich Bonhoeffer said before he was in prison. Oh, and as a matter of fact of the Bonhoeffer family, he was the sixth child of eight. And of those eight children, four of them were executed by Hitler. He was one of four. So it was, it was if you wanted to say there's this genetic pool of courage and integrity and backbone. But Dietrich Bonhoeffer said this, Grace is costly because it costs a man his life. And it is grace because it gives a man or woman the only truly life. Mm -hmm. True life consists of life that has God at its center. <clears throat> Excuse me. Cheap grace is the preaching of forgiveness without requiring repentance. 
communion without genuine confession, mm -hmm. and absolution without personal contrition. Cheap grace is grace without discipleship, grace without the cross, grace without Jesus Christ, living and incarnate. In the end, there are only two possibilities of encountering Jesus. Either choose cheap grace or choose God's liberating grace. That's beautiful. That's Luke 14. That's Luke 14. That's the parable. So how do we finish what we start? We keep, we pick up our cross, and we follow him. We decide, as Don said, we discern. Mm -hmm. And what was your second D? Discern to plan ahead. Discern to plan ahead. And determine to follow through. And determine to follow through. Yeah. It reminds me uh, when and you thirdly, were... thirdly, focused obedience starts now. The focused obedience starts now. It reminds me of what Paul said to Timothy before he died. He said, if we die with him, we will also live with him. If we endure, we will also reign with him. If we disown him, he will also disown us. If we are faithless, he remains faithful, for he cannot disown himself. Do you belong to Christ? He will never, ever stop being faithful to you. Will you remain faithful to him? Will you keep building the tower that you started? Mm -hmm. He wants you to be so in love with him that you are willing through the challenges, through the temptations, through the difficulties to keep on keeping on. There's a last, I'll end with this poem called More. There's a place near the fire where all that is left is abandonment. Soft is the spirit sound saying, will you love me more? Hmm. Father God, I thank you that as Janie was speaking, the realization the tower is us, <laughs> each of us. That's good. And as we're able to build our life on your word and on your ways and on your truth and on your presence, on your power, and your guidance, then the tower will be completed. Focused obedience starts now. And I pray, Lord, that we would understand that when we're going through this troublesome time, choices, choices, choices. Bonhoeffer had those choices, and he made the right choice each time by walking in the ways of Christ. He had costly grace, not cheap grace. He had the ability to keep looking for Jesus would you, would you sit beside that man or woman right now, Lord? Would you help them in their troublesome place? Uh, they're really anxious and they're really, they're really in a stew and they don't know what to do next. Would you guide them, Father, and give them discernment so they can plan ahead? Mm -hmm. Would you guide them, Father, give them determination so they can follow through? I thank you for what you're gonna do, Lord. There are gonna be more and more towers that will be completed. They will not be made a mockery because why? Those towers are people, and those people are you and me, are all of us here, Lord. And all we want is you to, be you to take honor and you to take glory. Mm -hmm. We have a passionate love. It's because you gave it to us. We have a perseverance of the saints. It's because you gave it to us. Mm -hmm. And just as uh, our dear friend, who's now with you eternally, he said, I, uh, I, uh, I receive it. Mm -hmm. I believe it. I receive it. Change my eyes, O oh Lord. Mm. Change my heart. Make it like Jesus. Mm. Mm. And Abba, Father, I belong to you. Mm. I think that, that that's such a powerful prayer. Yes. Abba, Father, I belong to you. Holy Spirit, we ask that those who have listened today and don't think their hearts have been captured by you, would you capture them? Would you bring them into your arms and flood them with your Holy Spirit so that they may understand the quality of love that would call your disciples to follow you all the way to the cross. Gladly, with a joyful heart, with a singing heart, even as they get closer and closer to the fire, the fire of your spirit that says, love me more, love me more, 
love me more. Holy Father, send your fire of love. Send your fire of salvation. As those who desire to know you, say, Father, I, I want you. I ask for you to forgive my sins, to come into my life, to plant the seed of faith within me, and to grow that seed into a tree of life that nothing and no one can destroy. Thank you, Father. Thank you. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on me. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on me. Break me, melt me, mold me, fill me, Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on me. Father, we give you all the glory. Now unto him who is able to keep us from falling away and who will bring us with great joy into his glorious presence. All glory to him who alone is God our Father through Jesus Christ our Lord. All glory, power, authority, and dominion belongs to him who is before all time, is in the present, and is forevermore. All glory to God. Father, thank you, thank you, thank you. Friends, thank you for being with us in this time of worship. If this has been meaningful to your soul, if you think that others would benefit from hearing this message of costly grace, would you please be courageous and share it on your Facebook page and with your friends. And don't forget that it would be helpful too if you would purchase Even If because it will instruct you further and your friends and your children. We love you in Christ. We do all that we do for his glory. And so I say to you today, shalom, mm. my friends. And I say to you, Godspeed, my friends, Godspeed. We um, look forward to seeing you again. I'll be meeting with you on my garden devotional on Wednesday and perhaps before. But in between now and then, we pray that God would bless you and keep you and cause his face to shine upon you and keep you in his perfect peace. And our Trinitarian closing, yes, 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 yes. yes. threefold. Thank you for being with us. Bye-bye. Yeah. Bye-bye.